report. From its ancient beginnings, tarot has been a useful tool for the sensitive seekers of the world, for the brave among us willing to look deeper, to ask questions about what cannot be seen. But the expedition into the unknown can have webs of minor madness. It's easy to get lost in the answers we seek, and suddenly the tools can become the guides. Welcome to Terranoia, a special limited series about navigating the wonders and dangers of online tarot. Of course, there was a, the truth. You, you know, we always go into it, or I start to go into it with my... um method of boy i would love to get sponsored or i would love to get monetized you know the same stuff on youtube because it'd be great to make a living doing this how, how wonderful but the well, reality of if we don't we're not going to be able to ultimately do it because everybody needs to pay the rent everybody needs to buy food so if yeah. you like the service that your reader is providing it's very important to provide some kind of reciprocating energy there so we found our readers we like a lot. I found some people that I enjoyed that resonated with me. I moved from the love stuff to actual life kind of stuff, but I'm more about now I, the teachers. I, I like because I am a study of tarot. I'm not, I, I like to teach it and I like to study it. But as far as a reader is concerned, oh yeah, I can totally read your mail if you'd like. But I enjoy my subscription people are more about the teachers in the, in the world. So I was going to ask you, so what should you pay attention to when choosing a reader? So maybe we should go to that thing. Cause I, I was paying attention to my own uh, needs and that mm -hmm. was for them to say they're coming next week, three minutes from now, they're going to text you. <laughs> and, um, that's what I was searching for. What do you what do you say about that? For myself and what I recommend when people are watching my channel is to not listen to it, not exactly listen to the story I'm telling. Pay attention to how it feels when you listen to me. Do you like my energy? Do you like my voice? Do you like my way of filtering through the pictures and the messages? Because ultimately your reader is the conduit. The cards are just a tool to translate with the reader. So if you don't resonate on an energetic level with a reader who is the conduit for the message, then the message that comes out is probably not going to sit very well for you. So I say pay attention to how you feel. If you tune into a reader and you're like, I don't like that they always say this or Ooh, there's something about their tone of voice or their energy that doesn't vibe with me, pay very close attention to that. That's probably not your reader. It doesn't mean it's not somebody else's, absolutely, but it's probably not yours. It's so it, you have a responsibility yourself in paying attention to that kind of thing when you're watching general reads, especially. So right now, uh, I know you probably have a few people that you subscribe to, but what do you look for in a reading? For myself nowadays, I look for people who, because I learn from other readers, so I like to look for people who approach tarot in a very different way than I do to get a broader scope on my interpretations. Back in the days of love tarot, what was I looking for? Somebody who would, like I said, confirm my negative beliefs, which isn't always the way to go. So, so I would go by headlines. I would <laughs> go says, by sign. That says a lot about your personality, you know, um, looking for someone that's going to confirm your negativity. That's, that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, both do really. So although we can say, okay, well, there's no value in a reading that is just confirming what you want it to say, but actually there kind of is in a way, as long as you know that, you know what I'm saying? So as long as you know, like, okay, you know how there's that thing where people say, okay, if you have two choices, throw a coin up in the air. Whichever one first comes into your mind that you hope for, oh, I hope it's tails. Or if it's heads and you feel that moment of disappointment, well, that tells you what you're actually wishing for. Therefore, there is no dilemma. Same with these kinds of readings. It tells you what you're wishing for. 
And that is good information because that is the energy you're sending into the universe. So even tarot readings that confirm your worst fear or your greatest hope, at least still tell you about where your energy could be at. So you were wishing to be proven right. Yeah. 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 In my case, it was a negative confirmation bias, but in many people's cases, it's a positive, but still it kind of let me know what energy I was projecting into the scenario. I knew he was a cheater. I knew he was a liar. That energy is sitting inside my heart, inside my brain. And it's good to know that, isn't it? Because it tells you where you're coming from. Or simply call them up and ask them, are you a cheater and a liar? You you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's something very powerful about having that secret knowledge. Like we were talking about in your case, right? It's like, yeah, well, they're not going to show you or tell you how they feel. But you know, you know, don't you? So you've got that little secret in the back of your mind. (laughs) But it wasn't the truth. For me. It's not the truth, but it told you a lot about yourself though, didn't it? it to me, it, it told me what I wanted, what I thought I wanted. That, Did it you know, tell you what you thought, what you thought you wanted or who you thought you wanted? What I thought I wanted because okay. who I wanted turned out to be completely different. I love that. So then what? Then what are you left with? Do you throw the whole thing out? In other words, okay, let's say you've been tapping into readings on your twin flame experience for three years. By the way, I've met people who have been tapping into these readings for as much as five years, seven years, waiting for their person to come back. So when you get to that point of ultimate giving up and being like, you know, this is not true. This person's not coming back seven years after the case. Do you throw away the entire concept and in the, all the info you've filtered through in the process? Or at that point, do you say, maybe there's some information here for me that's not associated to another person? Maybe these cards are actually all about me and tarot usually is. So, Well, again, what our thing, welcome to you, technically, because it is a big welcome to you at that point. Um, nice. That's that's how I feel about it anyway. It's true. It's true. Um, it's it's tough to tell. I can tell you this. I look for readers. I looked for readers. Like right now, I look for readers like you. I want to learn it more, and I like studying it. So I look for readers who read differently. I'm constantly looking for new ways to look in imagery or cards. Uh. That's, I really enjoy the, a way of looking at something and flipping it around. And we have a few people that we really enjoy, you know, Mm -hmm. I intuitive reader. So here's the other thing too. What, what is the difference between intuitive readers and classic readers in your opinion? And I know they're all out there, but a lot of, it's easy to be an intuitive reader if you can tell a story if you have a great imagination, if you, you know, but a classic reader now that's different because they're, they're just going right off of the cards. So I can give two examples and I won't, I won't go into the names. They're both incredible readers and I value them both hugely. One of them is a very classic tarot reader. In other words, goes off the images, the symbols, the tradition, and the history of tarot interpretation, which is a very assigned and kind of, uh, I won't call it limiting, but it, it's, it's a very assigned. Each card means this thing. These symbols mean this thing. When you tap into an intuitive reader, like my favorite YouTube reader, reads 100% intuitively, meaning every time she draws that card, it has a different meaning because she feels it differently and because it changes context depending on the cards that fall around it. Whereas a classic reader more sticks to the structured, like I only draw a Celtic cross. I only use the Rider weight. I only, you know, read it in kind of the more traditional sense of tarot. My favorite reader who I'm talking about will just randomly draw cards. She mixes three separate decks together and just draws that way. And however that card feels to her, 
is what the meaning now takes on. That's intuitive reading. Yeah. And so with that, they're telling their storytellers. They're storytellers. Yeah. Yep. And that's why I said it's so important to pay attention to the reader as the conduit. Do you like the way they tell your story? Because I've tapped into readers now for myself, if there's a lot of profanity, I'm no prude or anything like that, but I just find myself energetically feeling a little blockage, you know, so I won't watch because I don't like the language that they use. It doesn't sit well with me, so it's probably not going to tell my story. Or I've also watched readers where they seem incredibly sad and I can feel that I'm an empathic person. I can feel their energy. So think about the reader as like a filter that the energy is coming through and that filter is going to change how the story is delivered. So if you don't agree with the filter or it doesn't feel right to you, it's not. Go to a different reader. Find the one that works for you. I like I like to be entertained if I am listening and I like the great stories, but again, my main thing right now is listening to people that have a different interpretation of it all. And so I really fall more toward classic because I'm intuitive. I'm a very intuitive reader. So when I, but I listen for myself, I go for classic as opposed to intuitive. Well, if we're watching tarot for educational purposes, intuitive reading is something that can't be taught. So I'm with you. I tend to watch the more academics when it comes to learning tarot for sure. Oh yeah. And in another thing too, I ever all these different millions kinds of decks and everything. People that use like so many different decks and all that, it's a better show in a sense. You get different cards, it means different stuff. But I kind of, I don't know why I trust just like the right, like someone that just uses one deck or two decks. But when I mean that's for me, I feel more yeah. safe or more. Like they know that deck. It's like that. But the people that use millions in decks and everything and and they have it all over their desk, it's it looks like it looks great. It's very impressive. But it's like, how can you really be, to me anyway, uh intimate with all those decks? You know? So that's what I get for me when I'm when I'm reading. I like the person, the people that use less. Because I, I feel there's more intimacy in it. Well, there is because it's a tighter parameter that they're working within. So it is a by definition more intimate in that sense. I can see that for sure. So I like I do like multiple decks, and part of the reason I do as a reader is because okay, we take the rider weight. For instance, if you take the Ace of Wands and the Rider Waite, it mm -hmm. has very classical meanings. Yeah, but it can mean about 10 different things, right? Where a different deck will pull out an isolated definition of that Ace of Wands, and that is all it means. So it's very clear, and yeah. it's much easier in a sense to read, whereas the infinite possibility of the Rider Waite is kind of like the broad scope tarot, right? But it's yeah. like... Well, if I draw the Ace of Wands in my Llewellyn deck, it means this specifically. And I kind of like having that as well. No, you're right. I mean, if you think about it that way, it's 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 another language. It's a more it's 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 I guess pinpointy when it comes to defining. Yeah. Yeah. Like in my good tarot deck, which by the way is a deck I recommend for everybody. It's one of my favorites. But all of the cards are in singular. Any card that has a person in it is a singular energy. So anytime I'm doing a reading that doesn't have to do with love or family relationships, I go to the good tarot because the singularness of the cards only applies to the one individual. And that makes it a lot easier too. There's a red under my bed. And there's a little green man in my head. You're not going crazy, you're just a bit sad Cause there's a man in you, not in you, sad.